Hey, welcome to the Pod Couple Podcast. I'm Pod Guy, and we've got a very special guest with us, Jeff Carpenter. Hey, Jeff. Hey, how you doing there? Good. How are you? I'm doing good. Great. Good. Good. Good, good. to be here. So, um, I hear you're a actor, a director, and a writer. Is that true? That's correct. I've worked on a few, uh, few films here in Nanaimo in the area. Nice. Mm-hmm. And I hear that you're writing your latest, which is called Jingle Puss. Yes, it's a dark comedy about a cat that gets run over and the shenanigans that, that the characters get involved in afterwards. Well, everybody loves shenanigans. Mm-hmm, for sure. Especially if there's death. <laughs> it's just shenanigans. Yeah. Hey, so um, have you watched any movies lately? Yes, I have. I just watched uh, Don't Breathe. I watched that last night. Oh, that was my pick for best movie of last year, if you can believe it. Mm-hmm. That was very good. Very, a very suspenseful thriller. High tension, would you say? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what did you think of it? I thought it was, uh, like I said, I thought the beginning was a little predictable, but then in the second half it veered off into more uh, kind of uh, unpredictable territory. So there was some twists and turns yeah, at the more end twi- there? Yeah, more twists and turns. So uh, just for our listeners here, if you haven't seen the movie, uh, there will be tons of spoilers coming up. So spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Well, um, so well, what did you think was predictable? Beginning just uh, the fact that the uh, money, the kind of the boyfriend of uh, Rocky, the girl, he was being allowed. I knew he was going to die first. I just knew he was going to bite it. Well, he was a total dick. Right? <laughs> yeah. You were kind of hoping that he was going to die soon, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, but I thought it was kind of cool. They were right. stealing these keys to break into these right. houses. And then so I guess they would um, go in and take their stuff. And I don't know if they were peeing all over the place. So that was <laughs> something else. I right. didn't understand that scene. <laughs> and then uh, they would lock up the house and then smash it to make it look like they didn't. That they just a random burglar broke in. Yeah. Yeah. So right. I thought that was kind of yeah, smart. That was, that right? was pretty cool. Yeah. And um, then I guess they go to. Um, break into this blind guy that has uh, i guess his daughter was killed in a car accident and he got lots of money so they could try to break into this guy's house and uh of course he becomes um uber blind man or whatever right Uh, Mm -hmm. uber or that's a (laughs) yeah he was like a shell-shocked war veteran or something that he's a bit he had i think uh they said grenade fragments in his eyes that's why he was blind but yeah i thought uh i watched it again too um just so we could talk about it and um, I thought uh, it was still the pacing I thought was awesome. I thought the camera work yeah. was amazing. Like there's one scene where they're breaking into the blind guy's place and the camera's just kind of floating around down right. the halls and it's going into rooms and it's coming out with people and it's uh, yeah. and it's giving you clues of kind of what's, what's around in this house, right? Yeah, like the mallet and things like that. And, and the bell that's right. hanging from the ceiling. Right, right. And um, even it, the camera kind of swoops underneath his bed, mm-hmm. and we see there's a gun taped there right, and stuff. Right. So I thought that's that yeah, was awesome. Yeah, really well done. Yeah. And um, it kind of reminded me a bit of Evil Dead, right? Because mm-hmm. yeah. the camera's doing some crazy shit in that yeah. movie too. So, and um, do you know who the producer of this is? Yeah, it was Sam Raimi. Yeah. So um, I, maybe it was a nod to him, or yeah, it could have been, or maybe he kind of suggested it suggest this is what you're gonna do yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so uh what else did you take away from that show um i i i like the uh the fact that uh i guess more on the- thematic issue i like how the the ladybug reappeared in the uh the little symbolism there of the ladybug that reappeared after her story rocky the girl's story how her mom used to lock her in the lock her in the um the, the, trunk, the trunk of, of the car, car. yeah and so that, you knew that was gonna yeah. come right and there was a Part where that yeah, there's a yeah, lock the dog in the trunk of a car too that happened in the movie too, right? Yeah, I thought that scene was awesome too. Yeah. Like, I thought there was some really creative stuff going on where she creates this trap to trap right. the dog, and it's like, okay, well, she did it. She, now she can go get the money. But then this dog starts tearing <laughs> through the seats and shit. Ren yeah. going, holy smokes, yeah. right? Yeah. Is yeah. I don't know. Yeah. There, there, it's well done, yeah. there was tons of ne- suspense and never let up really until the very end it never did like you, you maybe take a breath once in a while but it just kept kept on going i thought it was even the second time i thought it was really good mm-hmm. yeah that's true yeah i liked uh i did like that uh 
the so I like the second half more than the first, but just because it started pacing was just out of control, was just nonstop action and, and excitement. And the way that they were creating suspense, I thought was really clever. When he falls out of the window mm-hmm. and then he's on top and, of that glass, and slowly thing. cracking. Yeah, it. so I thought, oh my god, that thing is like yeah. it's just different ways like that of right creating suspense. Yeah, you think he's you keep thinking they're escaped and they keep getting dragged back into that damn house. That yeah, fast. and just weird shit was happening. Like the dog is running through the vents, and <laughs> I, like I wasn't really expecting that either. Yeah, and, right. Yeah. And uh, were there any twists that? Um, Oh, kind of caught you off guard or yeah you mean like the person in the basement yeah so when you first saw that lady in the basement what did you think was going on with her yeah i thought she was just like a sex slave or something like that until you find out later that she's actually it was much more personal than that he she was the uh, instigator of the car accident and he he kidnapped her and then he was gonna have a baby she was gonna he was gonna have a baby with her but he was yeah it was yeah, so I guess um, she was pregnant, and he was going to get another daughter. But what if he got a son, right? Yeah, exactly. I don't know. I guess yeah. it'd be win-win. 50-50, I guess. And then, uh, yeah, he goes, I'm not a rapist. And then he's got this turkey baster. Is that what it was, <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah. And uh, they're showing a close-up of this thing, and it's got hairs in it. <laughs> and, like, it's just disgusting, and it's dripping from the turkey baster. Like, that whole scene was like, oh, my God, right? Yeah. yeah. And then he ends up getting the turkey baster in the mouth, right? <laughs> Down the like, choke on this. <laughs> choke on this. <laughs> Swallow my soul. <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah, I was kind of shocked that um, that's what he was doing with that lady right. down there. But yeah. once I kind of found out that that was his plan, I knew the girl was going to end up in that situation yeah. where she would have to take her place. Right, 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 right. I didn't get that right away, but I figured that out pretty soon once when she knocked her out. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, also, they had um, a scene where. He flips the breaker and Night, everything goes dark. Yeah. yeah. And I kind of liked how they did that scene. It was kind of like in black and white almost. Right. And uh, I don't know. I just thought that was really kind of cool. Yeah. And um, they're in this big, huge maze in the basement trying to get away. And, and they're all on his level because he's blind or whatever. Now they're blind just like him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, except for and then it was really weird. Like he was going through the basement and there was these things like a propeller that he would whiz. <laughs> yeah. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah, I did like, see that. Like, what's, what's up with that? And he, like, he was counting beams, I think. Yeah, yeah. But what was the propeller thing? Did you... Uh, uh, just a fan, I guess, is what it was. But was it a sound thing that, I maybe. guess, he would know how far he maybe. was? Maybe. It wasn't... It could have been that, maybe. Yeah, I was trying to figure that why that... Maybe, kind of... maybe making, yeah, some sort of echolocation. He's trying to figure out where he is or something. I don't know. Oh, like a bat. Like a bat, yeah, maybe. Hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. And how come there was no... Was Were there stairs at one time going downstairs? I don't and know. Then just they had disappeared? La- just or? had that ladder that went down all the time. Yeah, weird, eh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, uh, well, what else did you take away from that show? <laughs> what else? I'm just trying to think. Um, I just thought the... Uh, I thought the acting was really quite well done. Like... Uh, pretty believable it was pretty naturalistic acting it wasn't they it felt real like they're actually in danger and they're on this um on the uh, mission to go and break in and steal the money so i mean it all felt pretty believable to me well and what did you think of the setup of um the girl rocky i guess rocky um and her home and i guess her mom is a prostitute and she wants to get the little kid out of so that i guess that's the push to get the money Uh, uh, that's right yeah yeah did you like that yeah i like that aspect of it yeah okay good good yeah um and then the the uh, alex the other the other kind of normal guy who i guess is he's attracted to uh rocky He'd kind of do anything for her, kind of seems to be the way. Yeah. He was stealing his dad. His dad was a security expert, stealing his dad's keys and breaking into these houses first. And, no, you know, that was, but it was pretty clever using that aspect of it. Yeah. I thought it was very well written. Yeah. Uh, but like you said, yeah, it's, it starts with a bunch of punks and they're breaking mm-hmm. in. So you kind of think, oh, okay, this is just going to be your right. typical garbage horror movie, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, I thought it was very, very clever. Yeah. Good writing for Good. sure. That's for sure, yeah. And uh, the blind guy, who was that? Stephen Lang. 
Stephen yeah. Lang? Stephen Lang, yeah. I think he's... Uh, I think he just texted you, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Make, make sure I mention my name, yeah. Um, he was awesome, I thought. Mm-hmm. And so... He had very little dialogue, yeah. And what do you, where do you know him from? Uh, he, I think he was the bad guy in Avatar. Oh, yeah. I think so, yeah. Oh, and I think he's also in the... Um, Enter the Badlands, is that what's called? In, into the Badlands? Into the Badlands, yeah. yeah. He's in that show too. So What is he playing that? I haven't seen that. He's that like an show. advisor and I think he's in a wheelchair. So I think what? he's playing and in Avatar. He's in a wheelchair, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I think he's really good at playing. Disabled people? Disabled yeah. people. <laughs> yeah. Really good. Really good, yeah. <laughs> so if you need a disabled actor, call Stephen Lang. Mm-hmm. Or do you call him Steve Lang? Maybe. Mr. Lang. <laughs> Mr. Lang. How did you like the ending? Did you how how did you like the ending of that movie? What did you think? Well, when I originally saw it, I thought the ending was kind of garbage mm-hmm. and just kind of tagged on. But watching it the second time, yeah, it kind of makes sense that right. um, the old man would just report the robbery or right. there was nothing stolen. So I it guess did, it did seem kind of strange they didn't find that the uh, rape area or or the. Uh, when they just took him out of the basement, they didn't see the, the cops didn't find the, uh, the place they'd been ki- holding, you know, the kidnapped area, the kidnapping area. Yeah, well, there was no stairs going down there, so they <laughs> couldn't couldn't really be bothered. Yet. <laughs> yeah. They didn't want to go down that rickety ladder. Right, right, right. <laughs> so yeah, and then um, he was getting rid of bodies somehow. Did you? Yeah, maybe it was just acid or or uh, lime or something, some sort of like some sort of I thought it was an acid. Type black tar or something. Yeah, so I thought it was, um, I thought it was maybe just kind of um, some kind of, mm-hmm. um, I don't know, like he had an oil fuel right. furnace or something in there, and just, he was just his, putting it in the, there. Yeah, it could have been that. And just keeping them covered, so I guess they wouldn't smell right. or whatever. I don't right, know. Right, right, right. That could be. But I was thinking for the ending, I actually read the script. At least a, a version of the script, a 2014 version of the script, and in that one, uh, Alex survives and go. And in the police station, he he says, "I'm the one that that uh, I'm the one that stole the keys from my dad, and I was the one robbing the thing." So he actually lives. Oh wow! Yeah, at least at least that at least to that point. Anyway, near the near the end, and then I also heard that they actually originally were going to have a scene where um, Rocky and her little sister are on the on the uh, train they're about to leave and then just before the train leaves you see a cane enter this into the frame right so you know someone's coming after them right and that's that's oh, that's, that's, that's what it ended it that would maybe a little too much but it might might have been a too much yeah. yeah but i'm pretty sure that making this movie they were thinking of getting mm-hmm. a franchise yeah, out of it right so. i don't know do you know how well it did or um i think it made a hundred million dollars. I'm oh, just really? throwing numbers out there, and it cost ten million to make. Oh, really? So well, I think that's uh, what I heard. Oh, that's pretty good. That was really good. Yeah. How did um, Alex die? He got shot, I think. You know, he actually died. The, the one time you think he gets uh, pickaxed, but it, he the body it was actually or with he was stabbed with that with those uh, the cutting the, the shears, shears the shears. But it was actually the uh, the uh, money, the other gangster guy. That... Yeah. So the first time I saw it, I thought, well, what the hell is that? Like he just accidentally stabbed somebody else and was okay with that. <laughs> yeah. But I guess uh, he didn't know maybe. Like um, I thought he should have been kind of. They should have showed him going underneath right. that thing a little bit better. But right. I guess they whatever they were trying to do, they made it work because we right. thought he was dead. Right? right. And then he comes back. Then he gets killed again. Well, how did he get killed the second time? Do you remember? He's about to leave with, he both they they get the door, they get the key to the front door, and they're going out the front door, and just as it opens, he gets shot by Stephen Lang, who comes around the corner or something. Oh, okay, yeah, because they're always pomping up right. left and right, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, <laughs> either the dog back. or him, right, right. Um, but so I thought they had a, a lot of clever things too, like uh, putting the empty liter bottle right, on right. the gun as a silencer, right. And then they had they made uh, what do you think it was that was in that bottle that uh, some, kind of, some kind of gas some kind of that made them sleep yeah, I yeah. guess uh, yeah. didn't 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 work too well in this case though but <laughs> well they were probably there for hours and hours know. who knows yeah but uh, yeah I guess they thought, they thought he was an easy mark but 
They were wrong. Were they ever, weren't they? Um, a couple other things that I noticed was that, uh, well, they did a really good job of making the blind guy creepy. Right. Because he's listening to the videos of his, his daughter, daughter and, and stuff. Hit, and you yeah. hear this thing on repeat and it'll singing nursery rhymes or what she's singing. And... Yeah. And I think, I thought she said, don't breathe right. somewhere. I don't know, because I was waiting for them to say don't breathe. the name of the movie, but I don't think they did. He had this kind of this um, safe in this closet. Right, yeah. And then it's pretty convenient that after he opens it and then he closes it, it shows the the combination (laughs) for a couple of seconds before it closes. Like, that's bullshit, I'm saying, (laughs) right? It seemed pretty convenient for for her to see that. Yeah, very convenient. So I thought, uh, okay, well, that's a little bit of a stretch, but I was okay with it. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I saw it. Was, it was interesting that it was in the closet that Rocky was hiding in, so it was, that was kind of convenient. Kind of convenient. It was kind of cool, though. And then the combination for the safe downstairs was the, the same, same combination, too. Right. So he doesn't change the passwords. Probably even the code for his alarm would probably be the same, <laughs> too, right? Right, yeah. And uh, I was just thinking uh, the about the ladybug that she was talking about earlier, of how when she, um, her, she was locked in the... Uh, car with Lars locked in the trunk of the, the car with her mom and she had uh the big ladybug going on her arm she got she was getting that tattoo on her arm yeah and then later on the ladybug appeared in, um, where, where was what she went when the ladybug appeared to her in the movie do you remember what, what it was i'm trying to remember um was it in the car was it in the car with the dog or was it still in the house it happened twice actually oh did it yeah so it happened at the beginning um, I think she's just kind of daydreaming right. and they show the the um, ladybug. ladybug. And then, yeah, I think it was in the car the second time. Um, but I don't remember. But I know they showed it twice. Right. And I thought it was really weird that the night before the big heist and then they're going to move to California, she goes to get this tattoo. L- tattoo. It's like, well, I don't know. But then there was some kind of story about, oh, well, once we get to California, I'm going to color it in and never uh, get never get another one or something yeah i'm never gonna mark mark my skin skin again or something like that i thought okay well i guess right it was a vehicle to tell that story right yeah so um are you a big horror fan by any means yeah i'm a big horror fan like uh i like original horror films what's your couple of your favorites a couple of my favorites i'm trying to think of recently well i like green room oh yeah yeah, have you, have you seen that one? I have seen that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I thought that was really good, kind of cultish, right? Yeah. Um, very well done for the budget, right? Um, yeah. So I really enjoyed that one. He's an up and comer, isn't he, Jeff? Yeah, Jeremy Saulnier is the writer director of that one, and it starred Macon Blair, who's fil- been in a few of his films, like Blue Ruin, as well. Oh, I think that's just him phoning now. <laughs> Should <laughs> we that, get that? I don't think it's my phone. Hey Blair, yeah, make him, make him Blair, yeah, and they're both of them are working on a new uh, thriller now. I think it was being filmed in Calgary called Hold the Dark, about uh, a um, about a about the Avengers. No, not about the Avengers. Oh, I'm shocked. <laughs> yeah, no, it's about the a wolf a hunter who's being called in to track these wolves that have been killing these children in this village. This kind of like a, I think it's an uh, Alaskan village. Is that based on a true story? It's based on a book, I think. Oh, okay. But not a. I don't think it's. I think it's a fictional book. I don't think it's. It may have been inspired by a true story, but not. I haven't heard about the true story. Because uh, I remember hearing a story like that at one time. Yeah. And uh, I guess this wolf was just so clever that nobody could catch it. Right. And um, so he ended up trapping the female wolf and using that as bait. Oh, bait? oh interesting. That might that could happen in this one possibly. Yeah, so I don't know who wrote that story, but it was really good. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And uh yeah, that sounds pretty interesting. interesting. Yeah, yeah, it should yeah. be should be interesting. Yeah, I think there's I think it's a like an action drama thriller movie, so in the same vein as Blue Ruin and Green Room that kind of Oh, cool. Yeah. Um have you ever seen that uh, wolf movie with Liam Neeson. What the oh, yeah, The Grey. The Grey. Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. I, I thought it was really good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I was I kind of went in there not really expecting and not really thinking too much about it. But, yeah, I thought that was a solid movie. The Grey, check it out. Mm-hmm, for sure, I recommend that one. Yeah. 
And um, what other horror movies? Um, I just want to say uh, my favorite horror movie is Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2. Mm-hmm. Did you like those? Yeah, I did like those movies quite a bit. I liked Evil Dead 2. It's probably my favorite of those. It was, it was is. a little more entertaining. It wasn't quite as dark as the first one. It was more of a comedy, but the right. first one was just terrifying, Fine. right? Yeah. And very gritty and gruesome. very low budget and yeah, yeah. Really well, really inventive for what they for what the resources they had to make that movie. Totally. And uh, I just thought too was yeah, it was comedy. It was weird. It was trippy, mm-hmm. horrifying as well. And it showed you things you'd never seen before at that point, like an eyeball shooting out, <laughs> or even a killer tree that was grabbing <laughs> a people, raping tree. <laughs> yeah. Go see. Go take a look at that raping right, tree right, over yeah, there. Right. Yeah, that's that show's awesome. Yeah, it's very good, and uh, it inspired. It, it it had quite a say, quite an inspirational effect on a lot of you know low budget movies and things. It really had. You can see the impact it had, and in, in it really in, uh, a lot of people copied it or were inspired by it in some way. It's uh, it's a cult film right. for sure. And um, did you like the third one, The Army of Darkness? Yeah, I, liked it. I didn't like it as much as uh, number two. I I, I was a little. I thought it was a little too heavy on the medieval, not so much on the on like the Evil Dead as it seemed. But I mean, it was all right. I didn't find I didn't like it as much. Yeah, I wasn't a, a big fan of that one. It was kind of kidsy. Yeah, I yeah. kind of thought. Yeah, and it had a great opening where the car is falling from the sky. Right. And yeah, he's falling with a chainsaw hand. He goes, "This is my boomstick or whatever," <laughs> yeah, right? right? And he, it's perfect setup. And then, yeah, it just turns into this comedy, mm-hmm. medieval comedy for right. children. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it didn't have a lot of, it wasn't too hor- horrifying or too atmospheric or anything. Yeah, yeah. And then we were talking earlier about the Evil Dead remake. Who, or, d- who did that? The, yeah, Fede uh, Alvarez, who also did, uh, wrote and directed um, Don't Breathe. He, he, was the, he was the guy who did that. So Oh, interesting. So he's worked with Sam Raimi on a few things. Ghost House, I think, is Sam Raimi's production oh, company. Oh, okay, so he's, yeah, he yeah. And um, did you see that movie, the remake? No, I haven't seen it. How, how about you? I did see it, and I'm a huge Evil Dead fan, just like I told you. Right. And I was getting ready to hate this thing mm-hmm. like there's no tomorrow, but I really enjoyed it. I yeah. thought it was solid, so I, yeah. I liked it. How was it compared to the original? Um, there's not really a lot of comparison. Yeah. It's kind of, yeah, I don't know. Like it's got the book Mm -hmm. and, um, it's more dark and gritty and not so much of the comedy. Does it take things from uh, Evil Dead 2 as well as remaining just Evil Dead 1? You know, I'm going to have to watch it again, but, um, I'm I'm sure there's lots of nods to both of those. So, um, yeah, let's uh, watch that one again, Jeff. Yeah, I'll see that one, yeah. But there might be a... Uh... Hey! I'll swallow your soul! I'll swallow your soul! I'll swallow your soul! <laughs> swallow this. Or the, something like that. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> so, um, anything more about that Evil Dead remake? Other than we should see it again sometime? Yeah, I don't really remember a lot of it. All that I remember is that I really enjoyed it, and uh, I guess I wasn't, uh, I had low expectations right, too. Right, so, so really have surpassed your expectations. Yeah, yeah. So I really enjoyed it. And uh, do you think they're going to be making a sequel to that one? or Maybe. I haven't heard anything about it. I heard there's Man. there was talk of a tie-in with um, Bruce Campbell. Oh, really? And they're kind of... Mm-hmm. It could be even like a quantum physics type right. thing, oh, yeah. where they're on different In dimensions, or something? dimensions and stuff. Yeah, so I don't know. Hmm. That'd be interesting because you know there's that big vortex right, right. thing that right, sucked right. them into the medieval time. So right, could be uh, layers on layers of realities, or I don't know. Pretty trippy. Could be they should do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd watch it. Indeed. All right. So, uh, well, what other horror movies are you into? Uh, well, I, the, probably my favorite is probably The Thing. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. And have you watched it lately? I heard uh, there's like a fancy Blu-ray. I, I bought it, but I haven't actually sat down to watch the new Blu-ray yet. I have what? to. Uh, no, I had to watch that sometime. Cool. It has new, I think, new interviews with a lot of the character with a lot of the uh, people, the actors and the producers and the writers and everything. And um, do you usually listen to the... Often, if I really like, I listen to the commentary if I if I'm really interested in the movie. 
And so you just learn a bunch about yeah. the movie while yeah. watching it again. Kind yeah, of yeah, thing? I watched it. I watch it, but yeah, I just watch it for the movie first, and then if I'm interested, I watch the commentaries or the special features and all those things just to get a more of a behind the scenes look at the production. Mm-hmm. I, I was like, I was like, like learning the behind the scenes uh, facts. Nice. And um, what's your viewing? Um setup is like do you have surround sound no uh, i thought just a general this is a very basic like a dvd blu-ray with uh with the t with the tv and i don't really have a big set like a big theater it's home cinema setup just like a basic i actually watch a lot of my movies on my computer i have a, a dvd player in there so i watch a lot of my dvds on my computer oh okay yeah Oh, well, if you got some good speakers, it sounds really yeah, good. So yeah, I got good speakers and I either that or headphones, so I can, it sounds good. Yeah, well, I'm going to ask to borrow that Blu-ray once we get a better setup. Like, we've got this teeny tiny mm-hmm. TV that we're watching now, uh-huh. but uh, it would be nice to be see that one on the yeah, big screen and Blu-ray sure. with yeah. kick-ass sound, eh? Yeah, it'd be excellent. Mm-hmm. Very exciting. Like being in the theater in 1982 all over again. Yeah, did you see that one in the theater? No, I saw it on VHS when it came first came out at my friend's house. And did I, it scare the piss out of you? I was. I thought it was awesome. I thought it was. I you know, it was just a super fun movie. I wasn't. I don't know how. I can't remember how scary it was. I just remember it was. It was awesome. I remember seeing like the uh, the buried UFO in the snow. I just thought it looked great. Everything was. Everything was cool. I loved the uh, the blood test scene. That stuck oh with, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Everything about that movie is great. Uh, well, I think you um, sent out a clip that it was like um, that scene, but with Frozen. Was that? Was that? Or, or was like some kind of animated oh, yeah. thing? Oh, yeah, I think so, yeah. And it was fantastic. Like, it was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Like, I think it's better than the original, <laughs> to tell you the truth. Some motion of the, of the, uh, of the, uh, of the, the blood uh, test the blood thing. Testing, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mm-hmm. think it had, um, what's the snowman from Frozen? From, from oh, Olaf in it or Olaf, <laughs> Olaf's <laughs> in it or whatever, right? <laughs> so Google that one. It's a it's a gas. It's a gas. Yeah, hilarious. And um, did you see the remake of the thing? That, yeah, I did. And what did you think of that? I thought it was it started off pretty interesting, just going back to the Norwegian camp. And I don't know. If I say once you start delving into the backstory, it kind of removes all the mystery of the original story. So that's always kind of like the back, kind of like the. Um, the downside of it but i mean it was it was interesting and i thought it was good the ending i when it ties into the beginning of the first thing because it's basically a prequel isn't it, i think oh okay yeah because they were on the ufo right some chase scene in a ufo or something was mm-hmm. that yeah um yeah so i thought it wasn't horrible but yeah it wasn't great by any mm-hmm. means right and um what do you think about um the new version of it coming out oh yeah it looks exciting I actually saw a comparison between the original trailer and the uh, the new tra- remake trailer, and it looked pretty pretty similar. Yeah. Oh no way. Yeah. yeah should, oh well, yeah. the trailer looked really good, didn't yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah, it was. It really, yeah, it really captured the feeling of that kind of uh, '80s um, teenager suburbia Stephen King feel. And yeah. act- and actually, one of the the actors in the new remake. Is also in Stranger Things, so yeah, you love that show, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, I think it's named Wolfheart or something. Finn, oh, yeah, Finn yeah, Wolfheart yeah. or something. Wolfheart Finn or Finn Wolfheart. Well, they definitely nailed that eighties yeah. um, Spielberg right. kind of feel, didn't right. they? Yeah, but the yeah the new it, it should be great. I would definitely want to check that out when it comes out. I think I think they're actually making a two parter. So it'll be a two. There'll be a children's like the. Uh, a film that focuses on the children, and then maybe if that does well, they'll do one with the uh, focus on the and the adults afterwards. Oh, that's kind of a cool idea, eh? Yeah, I think the end of the original was the it was a big spider. Like, yeah, I hope they don't do that for this one. <laughs> I can't, I can't remember that one. I just remember the clown, uh, Tim Curry's clown. I guess it was a spider. It was this a giant spider, spider is the ending. And it's like, well, we don't want it to be a spider, right? <laughs> this is ridiculous. It makes no sense. All right. So I just hope it's not a spider at the end of yeah, this. It's, thing. it's like a d- demonic thing that can change shape, right? So it could be any shape. See, well, right? I can buy that, but I think it was a spider at the end of the <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. A spider that could change into a clown. I yeah. don't know. And it was, uh, where did they find the spider again? It was in the sewers. Of in the sewers. Room. Yeah. And there was a red balloon hanging out of it. I don't know. <laughs> I have to see it again. Yeah. And um, 
speaking of Steven Spielberg, I mean Stephen King. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's um, I guess The Mist is yeah. going to be uh, a mini series. Is that I what think it so. is? I think they're filming in Nova Scotia, weren't they? Or yeah, I don't know. I, I just think they, I think they were. And who's going to be playing that thing? Mm, a, I don't know much about that, really. Okay. Uh, uh, sorry for <laughs> lack of information. I just haven't read much about. It. I know that they're. I think the um, the trailer is coming out soon or something. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So um, I read the book The Mist, Mist yeah. and uh, I don't know. It was okay. Did, and, you, did you see the movie or? I did see the movie. Did you? No, I haven't. Oh, okay. Well, you should. Yeah. Because. That was one weird movie. That's Frank Darabont, isn't it? Or who's that? Frank Darabont. He he's made a lot of uh, Stephen King movies. He he did uh, Shawshank Redemption. I don't know if he directed, but he wrote it anyway. Frank Darabont and he. I oh, think, okay, yeah, yeah. Now I know where you're. Green talking. Mile, I think he mm-hmm. wrote, wrote that. I think. Well, I won't give out any spoilers for The Mist, but it was uh, the most irritating movie I've ever seen. <laughs> irritating in what way? <laughs> Just some of the characters were just what? so, oh my God, like, kill that person, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. I don't know if they do kill that person. But, um, yeah, it was just some, a lot of the characters I I felt were really irritating. Uh-huh. But, you know, uh, at the end of the day, they um, kind of did something uh, which I thought was super original. And I ended up liking that movie. So yeah. it's kind of a love-hate Mm -hmm. Uh, kind of movie for me so check it out but i do recommend it believe it or not irritating characters and all all. yeah check her out yeah i heard the movie i heard it ends on a kind of very lovecraftian note or something i don't know what that means but no spoilers (laughs) i'm saying okay okay no spoilers but uh yeah check it out because uh yeah the ending is really good cool yeah so i guess that's all for the stephen king um news Mm -hmm. yeah Unless you know more. No, I don't. I can't think of anything else right now. Did you used to read Stephen King? Oh yeah, I used to when I was a kid. I used to read. I used to like. Uh, what's my favorite Stephen King book? I like Pet uh, Cemetery. Yeah, Pet Cemetery is good, but I think I like the the, the Shining. Um, what else is a good one? I'm trying to. Think. Oh yeah, I really like the Dead Zone. That was Dead book. Zone was yeah. a good read. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I used to read them all. I've got right. a huge collection. Right. Um, I kind of like the short stories too. Richard Bachman or whatever. The Richard Bach Thinner. I thought I really liked that book, and mm-hmm. I went to go see the movie, and I thought, wow, if they could do half as good as the book, it'll be great. And they couldn't. They, they couldn't. They, couldn't. <laughs> um, <laughs> they just couldn't. Did you ever see Skelton? Did you read Skeleton Crew? I did. I think that was one of my um, first ones. Oh yeah, cool. And yeah. and uh, I remember there was one short story and it was super short, and it was about I don't know why uh, you might have to help me with this one, Jeff. Right? Is um, they were traveling, so I don't know if it was time travel or it was they were traveling to a different planet or whatever. Right. But they would have to hold their breath or something All like. right. Or yeah. I don't know what it was. Um, but it was like you had to hold your breath or you didn't have to hold your breath or. You had to put this mask on or whatever, and right? If, and if you breathe or something, something might happen. And then it was the kids didn't do what he was supposed to do. And I think he ended up holding his breath. And um, he ended up going crazy. Oh, yeah. For, from the, <laughs> from the, um, the process. The process, oh, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm going to have to read that one again. Yeah, it sounds interesting. But yeah, he did have a couple of good, really short stories kind of thing. I actually read one. Uh, not too long ago, and um, I can't even remember the name of it. What's it about? Um, it was almost like a kidnapping ransom type story, mm-hmm. and there was one character that was probably um, a mentally um, challenged. Challenged. Um, so it was kind of reminding me of um, of mice and men or something of mice and men type thing, right? Um, but I really liked it. So um, if you read, I'll lend it to you, no, Jeff, and, yeah, and, sure. and see what you think of it. Cause, yeah, for sure. And I'll try to get the name of it, too, for some reason. I, I just know it's a yellow book. Yellow book, yeah. One name. One thing I've been uh, really reading for the last couple of years is uh, Stephen King's son. is uh, uh, What's his name? Something Hill? Oh, Jonah Hill? Not Jonah Hill. <laughs> I'm just blanking on his first name for some reason. Yeah. Um, it's uh, Tabitha King? No, it's his son. That's the daughter, right? I guess it was, I thought it was his wife. Oh, okay. It might be, uh, yeah. Tabitha King is his wife. I think he's got two sons or three. 
Owen King. He may have a daughter too. It's Owen King is one of them. So, uh, and well, what's the book he's wrote? He's, he's written a few that are kind of, in, he writes horror books too that are in, in kind of similar to his father's in some way. He's written one called, um, he did his first was a, a collection of short stories called 20th Century Ghosts, which has some good stories in it. But then he wrote one called uh, Heart Shaped Box, which is about a guy that buys, uh, it's kind of like this old, this musician, kind of like a, uh, a, a, yeah, basically a jaded musician who likes to buy occult items off the internet, off eBay and stuff. Oh, no way. And, and he buys this jacket belonging to this weird guy, and it's a haunted jacket that kind of starts possessing oh, him and hilarious. things. hilarious. So it's like, a, yeah, it's pretty interesting. It's pretty creepy. So it's like a, it's like a ghostly haunted uh, suit that he buys from a some serial killer or something online, and it starts taking over his life. Oh, cool. That's called The Heart Shaped Box. And then he wrote one called... Um, What's that one? Uh, Nosferatu, which is like a... He didn't write that, Jeff. Come no, on. That's, that's the name of it. It's the NOS 4A2. Oh, hilarious. It's, it's like a license plate of this car and this of this kind of this wraithy uh, vampire character that drives around kidnapping kids and taking them to his, this special kind of like carnival land and keeping them trapped for yeah it's basically sucking out the youth of these children i think i've read that book and, really, it, and it's a spider at the end no <laughs> i swear to god it's a spider <laughs> yeah yeah uh, yeah well that sounds super cool i'll have to check into owen or whatever his name no, is no is that owen's his brother owen king is his brother this one's i think is why oh, can't jebediah no it's like jacob i think it's like john it's not john hill it's a, I, I'll, john I'll, king i'll look it up john hill king no what do you know about the Dark Tower, or the Gunslinger? I've actually never read that. That I've never read those ones. It's a fantastic series. I I, I'm, I know that uh, they're making into a yeah into a movie right now. Oh, Joe Hill, that's his name, Joe Hill. Oh, Joe Joe Hill King? No, just Joe Hill. But Why? He doesn't have the King name. He just he originally he wanted to didn't want to be compared to his father, so he gave. But then he's new. writing the exact same thing. <laughs> this makes no sense. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Joe, just go with the Joe Hill King. King. Joe Hill King, yeah, I think Hill is his middle name or something. Joseph oh, okay. Hill. Joe Hill, yeah, he's a really good writer. I recommend. Him. I actually kind of like him better than his father, just because he's uh, of more my generation, so it's I can relate to his work a little more. Yeah, well, Stephen King is still pumping him out. Yeah, um, but I think the last book I read was The Cell. Have oh, you yeah. ever heard of no, that I've one? I've heard of it. I haven't read it, though. And it was like um, everybody's cell phones are turning them into crazy people or yeah. stuff like this. And it was just terrible. So it wasn't very good, yeah. I thought, okay. His um, heyday's over. Stephen Hill, I've had it with you. <laughs> Stephen Hill. <laughs> Stephen and Hill, Joe, I've had Joe, it up Joe Hill's you. taking over now. <laughs> yeah, So, but I'm really pumped uh, to look for the Gunslinger or the Dark Tower, whatever the hell they're calling it, because... Isn't Idris Elba playing the gunslinger or something? Who's that? Idris Elba, uh, black actor from the UK. He's the he can't be the main character. I think so. I'm not sure who he is. I think so. Hmm. I oh. thought he was playing the gunslinger. I could be wrong. Oh, that sounds interesting. But yeah, fantastic books. So I just hope they at least get fifty percent of that right. Because mm-hmm. um, it's got lots of layers. Yeah, time travel and stuff yeah, like that too. It's like, well. a, it's like a sprawling epic or a saga or something. Yeah, yeah. But I really enjoyed those. I don't think I ever finished them all, but uh, uh, whatever I read was fantastic. Yeah, it should be an interesting mini series. Whatever they make out of it. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's a feature movie, yeah, isn't it? Right? I wasn't sure what they're making. It's, it's, it's gonna be. A, it's gotta be a, more than just a few, though. It's got to be a yeah, series. A maybe it'll be like the Lord of the Rings, where right. it's three hours <laughs> yeah. of epic movie. So who is directing The Gunslinger? Or is it called The Dark Tower? I think it's called The Dark Tower, colon, The Gunslinger. Oh, yeah. So for all of you listening out there, uh, we're the pod couple. Um, It's just Pod Guy and Jeff talking. And um, check out our Instagram, our Twitter. um, Send us some emails. Give us some feedback. um, Send us some roses and um, stuff like that. Hmm, the director is Nikolaj Arcel, who I don't know who the heck that is. Well, what else has he done? I don't know. I gotta look here, click on it. Drill down. Drill down, let's see here. He was born in Denmark. Whoa. He might have I think he might have filmed or filmed the original Swedish version of the girl with the dragon tattoo. Oh, okay. Interesting. He might have, he might have directed that one. So back in 
back in his homeland, he did that. Oh, well, that's very interesting. Because that was good. I really like that. Even in some ways, better than the remake by, by David Fincher. Yeah, and I thought the remake was pretty cool. Yeah. It's uh, interesting that they never um, kept pumping those out because mm-hmm. there was lots of books, weren't there? Yeah. Because there was all kinds of different tattoos, right? Yeah. Yeah, they have, there's about three or four books now. I think he was a writer on that, the writer of the screenplay for that movie. I don't think he directed it, but he wrote it. Oh, well, I hope he does a good job of yeah. this. And um, do we did we find out who the gunslinger is? Uh, let's see here. I'm pretty sure it's Tommy Lee Jones. Tommy Lee Jones. And John Travolta's in it too, I believe, as the it's, Dark Wizard. I think maybe it is Idris Elba. It says Roland Deschain. Or Roland, yeah, yeah, that's the dude. Idris, Idris Elba. And also it looks like Matthew McConaughey is the man in black. Oh, interesting. And uh, so all you're... right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. And then Jackie Earl, was the same Osmond or Haley or something? Was yeah, it? he played Freddy Krueger. Jackie <laughs> Earl Haley. He played, he played Freddy played... Krueger, oh, Jeff. Yeah. No, he's playing Sale or something like that in this thing. Sale or Sayer, whatever his name is. Mm, don't recall that dude. S a y r e, Jackie Earl Haley. He played Freddy Krueger. Yeah, in the remake. Yeah. Yeah, it was terrible. I never saw it. Good. I don't see a lot of remakes. That's not here. They're awesome. Yeah, and you never hear that, do you? <laughs> not too often. Well, the thing thing was remake. Uh, yeah, well, the, the John Carpenter thing was remake. Oh, you're right. You're right. And yeah. so was uh, the Fly, another good remake. Yeah, by yeah. David Cronenberg. Yeah, Cronenberg has done some really cool stuff, eh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really like I really like a lot of his movies. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever see like some of the older ones, like uh, Rapid yeah, and Rapid. The Brood? Yeah, I haven't seen The Brood, but I've seen. Scanners, which I think is great. Awesome, yeah, yeah. And uh, Shivers, or all they came from within. I think I saw that. That's I saw when I was a kid on late night TV, and it scarred me for life. Oh boy! It was very, very um, kind of gory. Sick. Not, no, it's not just gory. It just felt sick. I think it felt like, um, felt kind of depraved or something. As for a, for a little kid to watch that, it just seemed kind of, it just kind of twisted my mind. It just seemed. Kind of not just kind of grimy and kind of, kind of, I don't know. It's hard to say. Like morally repugnant, which yeah, is strange. Yeah, yeah. I kind of think I yeah. kind of know the feeling you're talking about, and I can I, definitely see Cronenberg <laughs> pulling that off. But his later movies didn't bother me to that. But when I was that, when I was that age, it just creeped me out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't mind seeing The Brood. I think that was the one that they were plugging when uh, I was a kid. Yeah. And. Uh, was Shivers? Is that the one you saw? Yeah, did... Shivers. It was also it was on late night TV, Canadian TV or something like that. And did it have... take place in a, in a in this big Toronto apartment building with all these like weird twisted people living in in uh, different rooms, and this kind of parasite would go from bathroom to bathroom and infect them all. It was just really kind of gross. Weird. <laughs> yeah, and for a kid, it was it had a sexual element too, which probably freaked me out at at, at my age, or whatever. So it just was like a. This seemed kind of disturbing. Well, that explains a lot <laughs> yeah. of how you turned out. That's right, yeah. But uh, yeah, Cronenberg, I don't know. He's he's done some weird stuff. Um, Videodrome, did mm-hmm. you like that yeah, one? Yeah, I, I liked that a lot, yeah. And um, what was that one with the gristle gun? Oh, uh, Existence. Existence. I, I never actually saw that one. but Yeah, that was all right. Um, and he, then some he, of he did the Dead Zone too. Ring it back to Stephen King. Yeah, yeah, the Dead Zone, which I thought was okay. Yeah, um, I love Christopher Walken. He was fantastic for that role, right? He the ice <laughs> is gonna break. <laughs> it's like it reminds me of that. Uh, have you seen that Saturday Night Live? And it's like a take off of that, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. it's like instead of him seeing things that are super important, it's all like minor stuff, right? <laughs> like. What were we just talking about? <laughs> oh, David Cronenberg. Oh, yeah, Cronenberg. Yeah. yeah, and then his later movies, I don't know. Uh, one of my favorite ones is Crash. Yeah. And uh, that's the one with uh, James Spader. Right. I thought that movie was fantastic because mm-hmm. it just kind of sucked me in. I didn't know what the hell was going on. Uh, but some of his later movies were more or, me- or recent are right. just kind of weird, and they're not right. really horror. No. And they're not really genre anymore. They're more like... Either crime or something like uh, history of violence, yeah, or uh, Eastern Promises. I think he did, yeah, yeah, stuff like that. They they kind of seem mainstream now, right? right? right yeah, so yeah, he's, he's kind of eschewed his uh, 
his horror roots. I think that's one reason John Carpenter doesn't get along with him well anymore. He kind of like he thinks he's an artist and he won't he won't uh, mingle with the rest of us kind of like genre people. And I kind of see that too, right? He's kind of artsy or right. was right. right. Um, did you ever see Spider? No, I never did. It's a clown at the end. It's a clown. <laughs> no, uh, I hear it's really good. I, I want to check it out, but yeah, I haven't seen it. There's a few of them as his I haven't seen, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's got a ton. Mm-hmm. Well, is uh, that it, Jeff? Or? I guess so. We've done well, we, we've done Stephen King. We've done <laughs> Cronenberg. We've done little, Evil little Dead. A little bit of the thing, yeah. Well, I guess that's it for today. And, uh, well, thanks for joining us for a bit of a movie talk and uh, and just sitting down and talking with Jeff Carpenter. So thanks, thanks Jeff, for joining th- me. Thanks for being here. It was really fun. And uh, hopefully we talk to you again real soon. Will do. Thanks for listening. We're the Pod Couple. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.